Glenn Edward Rogers was born on July 15, 1962. Rogers was born and raised in Hamilton, Ohio. He was one of seven children born to Edna and Claude Rogers. Claude was a pump operator at a local champion paper company. Rogers was expelled from his junior high school before he was 16. Sometime after his expulsion, Rogers' 14-year-old girlfriend Deborah Ann Nix got pregnant by another man. The young couple married and had another child in 1981. In 1983, Nix filed for divorce alleging brutal physical abuse. Before I go any further, I would like for you to know about this man's youth leading up to now. July 15, 62 age 0. Glenn Edward Rogers was born by Caesarean section to Edna Rogers and her husband. He was the sixth of seven total children. 1962 to 63 age 1 to 2 during his infant years, Glenn would sit and rock back and forth and continually bang his head against hard surfaces never once crying, his emotions seemed flat. 1962 to 64 age 1 to 3, Glenn was still in divers when Edna slapped him so hard he was unable to breathe and passed out. 1964 to 65 age 3 when he learned to free his arms from the restraints she kept him tight in, he would eat paint off the walls. 1964 to 65 age 3 during baths his red-headed mother grabbed his head and held it under the water. 1974 age 12. Glenn stopped wetting the bed. 1974 age 12. Glenn became addicted to drugs as a result of his older brother Clay, who is homosexual. 1974 age 12. During the same year he and his brother began burglarizing houses for money and was later caught after robbing over 200 homes. 1974 age 12. Glenn was sent to reform school as a result of his criminal behavior. 1975 age 13. Glenn found naked photographs of his red-headed mother and attempted suicide by overdosing on 25 modern pain reliever tablets. 1976 age 14. Doctors learned of Glenn's unusual blood disorder that manifested when he became upset or angry about things he had no control. He would break out in red splotches over his face, arms, hands, and chest porphyria, mad King George disease. 1977 age 15. Glenn met Debbie who was a 13-year-old prostitute. Several weeks after they met Glenn was arrested for a graded menacing, his first arrest as an adult. 1978 age 16 Glenn was expelled from school having reached his 16th birthday he was in the ninth grade with F's in every subject 1979 age 17 his dad suffered a life-threatening stroke that left him bedridden Glenn often dropped by and took care of his father while his mother went out in search of and found companionship 1979 age 17 Glenn saw his mother in a bar with another individual and beat them with a baseball bat. He later put his father in the car and took him to the bar to show him what his mother was doing. August 26, 79 age 17. Debbie was 14 when she became pregnant while continuing her job. Glenn was 17 and knew it wasn't his son but Clinton Dwayne was born August 26, 1979 and Glenn later adopted him and gave him the Rogers name. 1980 age 18. Glenn and Debbie were married. 1981 age 19. Glenn had a second son, Jonathan Claude Rogers. 1982 age 20. Glenn thought Debbie was cheating and followed her. After he witnessed her pick up a man he followed her home and beat her violently, striking her several times in the vagina with the toe of his steel toed boots. Even with corrective surgery it mentally damaged her. He believed that if he could not have her sexually then no one could. 1982-85 age 20-23 Glenn and Catherine Mary Copoina, with whom he had a son, moved to Los Angeles suburbs until December 1985. 1986 age 24 Glenn's brother Clay introduced Glenn to Shonda Price of whom they then pulled several hustles and cons throughout Ohio and Kentucky. 1986 age 24 Glenn went to the emergency room after being overly intoxicated and injecting Budweiser into his veins. He admitted to using cocaine on a steady basis. 1986 age 24. 
Fort Hamilton Hughes Memorial Hospital comments on Glenn's mental condition. Glenn is a mentally ill person subject to hospitalization by court order. He represents a risk of physical harm to himself as manifested by evidence of threats of or attempts of suicide. 1986 age 24. Glenn's father dies. 1987 age 25. Glenn is charged three times for public intoxication and once for drunken driving. 1989 age 27. Glenn was dating a woman by the name of Joyce Arthur when he and Clay sexually abused her after getting her intoxicated. Glenn then stole her money and left town. 1989 to 1993 ages 27 to 30. Glenn travels with a circus. 1991 age 29. Glenn was charged with reckless driving causing fire creating a substantial risk or physical harm to property of another without his consent, a second degree misdemeanor. March 13, 1992 age 29. Glenn files a fictitious report with the Hillsborough County Police, stating that his 1972 Caprice had been stolen from a BP from Clay. He told police Clay had threatened him with a .38 caliber revolver in order to steal $104 from his wallet as well as his vehicle. 1992 age 30. A redhead named Carrie Gaskins, one of the girls he pimped, was found dead by her daughter. 1992 age 30. Glenn was using James Peters ID and worked for a painting company. He met Nicole Brown Simpson this way and they partied together. 1993 age 30. Glenn engages in a fist fight with a co-worker at the Wagon Wheel Flea Market in Pinellas County, Florida. Their manager called police, but Glenn had fled the scene by the time they arrived. 1993 age 30. Glenn is found by a policeman covered in blood and bruises. Glenn claims to have been assaulted by his boss with a metal pipe, who then stole his wallet. His boss, William Harris, was charged with battery. 1993 age 30. A 16-year-old Hamilton girl Kelly Ann Camargo's body was found two weeks after she had been seen leaving a biker bar. 1993 age 31. Glenn raped and murdered a prostitute by the name of Mary. 1993 age 31. Glenn's first wife Debbie died of diabetic complications involving cocaine use. 1993 age 31. Glenn was staying with one Mark Peters when Glenn murdered him and buried his body in the family cabin and sold off his belongings. He was working with Liz, a 40-year-old redhead that they believed is buried near the old Las Vegas bus station. By the time police discovered Mark's body Glenn was in California and had already been arrested on another incident of using Mark's son, James Park's identification. 1994 age 31. Peters had been missing for four months when his remains were found in Roger's father's cabin. June 6, 95 age 32. Arrested for assault with a deadly weapon in Los Angeles, California. Glenn served 36 days in prison. September 1995 age 33. Arrested again in September for beating his girlfriend. Because he was still on probation, Glenn should have received a two and one half year sentence for the beating. However, the judge was unaware of the previous sentence and he was released on time served of two days. September 29, 95 age 33. Glenn met Sandra Gallagher at a bar in Van Nuys, a suburb of Los Angeles. He raped and stabbed her in her pickup truck after she offered him a ride home from the bar they had met at. After the murder, Glenn set the truck on fire and fled the scene. November 3rd, 95 age 33. Glenn met Linda Price, a red-haired divorcee, at a state fair in Jackson, MS. After they moved in together, not hearing from her for a week, her family went to the apartment and found her mutilated body in the bathtub. Brother Clay says Glenn called his mother the night of the murder and left a message on her machine. While spanking Linda Price's naked body he said I did it again, she was a bad girl but I'm making her pay for it, just like you made us pay mommy. November 7th, 95 age 33. Glenn met Tina Maria Cribs in a bar and bought her a drink in Tampa, FL. She was later found murdered in a motel room by stabbing, 
The commode in the room was filled with massive stools floating in the red and purple water similar to that found at Linda Price's crime scene. Commode common of his condition, the Rogers family said Glenn never flushed the commode. After the murder, Rogers flees the scene in Cribb's vehicle. November 9th, 95 age 33. Glenn murders another woman he had picked up at a bar in her apartment in Bossier City, LA. Andy Sutton was discovered on her punctured waterbed with stab wounds by her roommate. The same feces found in the commode that was found at the Price and Cribs scenes. November 13, 95 age 33. Glenn returned home to visit his family only four days after the sudden murder in Beattyville, KY. Aware of his past, family members alerted police to his presence, which resulted in a high-speed pursuit that ended in Waco, KY. November 13, 95 age 33. When police interviewed Glenn on November 13, 1995 and told him that they were looking at him for the murder of five people. Before requesting an attorney, Rogers seemed to be indifferent to the severity of his crimes and admitted to 70 murders. 1996 age 34. October 21, 1996 and again in November 1996, forensic psychologist Robert M. Berlin conducted tests on Glenn and diagnosed him with chronic psychotic disturbance. The Wexler test showed evidence of brain damage as well as Glenn's IQ was 76, six points above retardation. May 7, 97 age 34. The eight-day trial ended and the jury found him guilty of murder in the first degree. July 11, 97 age 34. Glenn received the death penalty, specifically the electric chair. 1999 age 36. Glenn was the first convicted killer to be extradited from death row in one state to be tried for murder in another. July 16, 99 age 37. Sentenced to death in Los Angeles, California for the first degree murder of Sandra Gallagher. 2006 age 43. Glenn is currently on death row in California having also been convicted of murder in Florida. As of April 2021, Glenn Edward Rogers is still on death row. Now that I have explained it, here is the rest. Oh, and was it really OJ or was it this guy? Authorities suspected Rogers in the stabbing or strangling of an elderly man from Ohio in 1993 and four women in California, Mississippi, Florida, and Louisiana. He originally claimed the number of murders was closer to 70, but then recanted his statement, claiming he was joking and had not committed any murders. On January 10, 1994, police recovered the remains of 71-year-old Mark Peters, a retired electrician and veteran in a cabin belonging to the family of Glenn Rogers in Beattyville, Kentucky. Peters had taken Glenn Rogers in and allowed him to live in his home before October 1993 when Mark Peters was reported missing along with his car and several valuable personal items including antiques, guns, and a collection of coins. Rogers had disappeared as well and it was reportedly his brother Clay, who led police to search the family cabin for clues, leading to the discovery of Peters' skeleton which was found bound to a chair and covered by a pile of furniture. On September 28, 1995, Sandra Gallagher, a 33-year-old mother of three, crossed paths with Rogers at McCred's Bar in Van Nuys, California. The next day, Gallagher's strangled and badly burned corpse was found in her car near Rogers' Van Nuys apartment. Authorities allege that after murdering Gallagher, Rogers moved to Mississippi, Louisiana, and Florida, killing a woman in each state. On June 22, 1999, Rogers was convicted of murdering Gallagher and on July 16, 1999 the state of California sentenced him to death. Kathy Carroll, Price's sister, said Price had met Rogers at a beer tent at the Mississippi State Fair. She remembered that her sister repeatedly said, ain't he good looking? Rogers and Price briefly shared an apartment in Jackson, Mississippi. The last time Carol saw her sister was the night before Halloween 1995 when the two were planning to have Carol's grandchildren go trick or treating at Price's apartment. However, the next day, Price did not answer her door, and Rogers was gone. Similar to the other killings, Price and Rogers met over drinks, like the other women, Price was in her 30s and had red hair. She was found dead in a bathtub. 
On November 5, 1995, Cribs was seen leaving the Showtown Bar in Gibsonton, Florida with Rogers. A bartender told police that Rogers had bought Cribs and her friends drinks and that Rogers later asked Cribs for a ride. Two days later, a member of the cleaning staff in a Tampa motel discovered Cribs' body in a bathtub, like Price in Mississippi. She had been stabbed in the chest and the buttocks. A clerk at the motel told authorities that Rogers had arrived at the motel a few days before the murder. On November 5th, Rogers paid for an extra night and asked that his room not be cleaned. The clerk then saw Rogers putting his belongings into a white Ford Festiva. The next day, Cribs' wallet was discovered at a rest area in North Florida. The fingerprints lifted from her wallet and the motel room were matched to Rogers. On November 13th, Rogers was arrested in Kentucky driving Cribs' car, which he claimed had been lent to him. He also said Cribs was alive when he left. On July 11, 1997, Rogers was convicted and sentenced to death for the murder of Tina Marie Cribs. Sutton was a known acquaintance of Rogers. Her slashed body was found on November 9, 1995, on a punctured waterbed in her apartment in Bossier City, Louisiana. Rogers was arrested in Waco, Kentucky after a 13-mile chase on November 13, 1995. Kentucky State Police Detective Bob Stevens noticed Cribs' stolen car and chased him, followed by rookie Irvine. Kentucky Police Officer Charles Cox while Trooper Ed Robinson and other officers set up a roadblock to stop Rogers. Robinson fired a shotgun blast that hit the rear tires but didn't stop Rogers, then Robinson joined the pursuit. SGT Joey Barnes, who formerly served with Florida Highway Patrol, rammed his patrol car into Cribs' stolen car and spun him off the highway into a ditch. Stevens, Cox, Robinson, Barnes, and other officers surrounded Rogers and arrested him. Rogers' chase and arrest were filmed by a local TV news crew who were on the scene. Rogers was scheduled to be put to death on Valentine's Day 1999 in Florida, but he immediately appealed to the Florida Supreme Court claiming that the state had not presented enough evidence to support the charges. Rogers also argued that the trial court should have granted the defense's motions for a mistrial because a witness was allowed to testify about a misdemeanor for which Rogers was convicted in California. He also claimed the prosecution was allowed to present an improper argument during closing arguments. His appeal was delayed until March 2001 and was ultimately denied. In April 2005, Rogers filed another appeal. It was denied in 2011. It was his last appeal. The 2012 documentary My Brother the Serial Killer examined Rogers' crimes and included claims that Rogers killed Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman in 1994. According to Rogers' brother Clay, Rogers claimed that, before the murders, he had met Brown and was going to take her down. During a lengthy correspondence that began in 2009 between Rogers and criminal profiler Anthony Miolis, Rogers wrote and created paintings about his involvement with the murders. During a prison meeting between the two, Rogers claimed he was hired by O.J. Simpson to break into Nicole Brown Simpson's house and steal some expensive jewelry and that Simpson had told him you may have to kill the bitch. In a filmed interview, Glenn's brother Clay asserts that his brother confessed his involvement. Rogers' family stated that he had informed them that he had been working for Nicole in 1994 and that he had made verbal threats about her to them. Rogers later spoke to a criminal profiler about the Goldman Simpson murders, providing details about the crime and remarking that he had been hired by O.J. Simpson to steal a pair of earrings and potentially murder Nicole. The 2019 film The Murder of Nicole Brown Simpson purports to tell the story as asserted by Rogers and his family about his involvement with Nicole Brown Simpson. Rogers is portrayed by Nick Stahl and Mina Suvari portrays Nicole Brown Simpson. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.